Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome you all to our uh, webinar series 2.0 2020, uh, organized by JIS Institute of Advanced Studies and Research. And today we are going to start a four day uh, series of uh, webinars on health science and technology. And we will talk about uh, different aspects of uh, medical biotechnology and bioinformatics, uh, the research prospects, career prospects in this field, uh, primarily for the master students and the PhD researchers. So uh, on this first day, uh, I would like to just a second, I, I was sharing a screen, somehow it got stopped, uh, bear with me. Uh, yeah, so today, uh, let me present in front of you, Dr. Devobani Ganguly, who is an assistant professor uh, of uh, Center for Health Science and Technology at GIS Institute of Advanced Studies and Research. And uh, she's also a DBT Ramalingo Swami Fellow. Uh, she got this prestigious fellowship and presently working on that. And she received her PhD in chemistry from University of Calcutta uh, in the area of computational biophysical chemistry. And then he mo she moved to Kansas State University for her postdoctoral research. And uh, she is a structural biologist. Her uh, primary research interests uh, comprises of bioinformatics and computational biology to understand the structure, dynamics, and function of biomacromolecules using molecular modeling and molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, in her research lab, uh, there is something going on. Zoom is trying to play with me. Uh, so in uh, her research lab, uh, she is uh, working on the interactions of intrinsically disordered proteins, mutations, and post-translational modifications of disease-related proteins atomistic and coarse grain simulation to study self-assembly of small peptides. Uh, as you uh, already uh, are aware of uh, today's uh, title of presentation, that's uh, Newton's Law to Drug Design and Overview of Molecular Modeling. So uh, without any more delay, uh, let me welcome uh, Dr. Ganguly um, and uh, uh, later take the stage for uh, the next uh, couple of hours. Thank you, Devobani. You can, you can start. Thank you, Shujada, for introducing me. Uh, let's start. I uh, want to share. Could you please allow me to share my screen? OK, I think I can now. Yes. So uh, before I start, please allow me to introduce our newborn institute uh, in short. So this is our institute uh, is uh, we call JIS IASR. This is a newborn institute yet to celebrate its first birthday. JISR uh, is a postgraduate research institute under the leadership of Padma Shri Professor Ajay Kumar Ray. We aim to con contribute interdisciplinary translational research, creativity and entrepreneurship towards the transformation and welfare of our society. 
we have three centers data sciences center for health science and technology in short chest and center for interdisciplinary science i am from the center for health science and technology so uh, let me introduce our center very briefly there are five important aspects those make us proud and unique in eastern zone we have a very well equipped experimental lab with fully functional illumina mysec next generation sequencer this is actually rare in any academics in eastern zone this sequencer not only an important instrument in our in, in our research wing but uh, also it helps us it will help our students to be trained and use this experience in job market our dry lab is also equipped with hpc facilities with several gpus we have internationally experienced faculty pool it is an asset in not only our center but also all the three centers we have active collaboration with research groups in india and abroad our postgraduate course uh, course structure is well designed by experienced professors keeping an eye to job prospect and demands in expertise without compromising the basic syllabus although Mm, the goal is uh, to train our students to get jobs in pharmaceutical and biotechnology industries bioinformatics data analysis companies and obviously continue as a researcher and academics another unique opportunity is to have a chance uh, to pursue the internship in industries which can be a plus point in job searching good number of publication is our another key point again this is uh, true not only for chest but for other two centers as well we also have high budget research grants including prestigious dbt welcome trust so uh, have a quick look at our research interests bacterial virulence and antibiotic resistance big data of pathogen evolution in nature image processing and computer vision host pathogen interactions human microbiome and metagenomics medical microbiology medical imaging and machine learning molecular modeling and drug designing we encourage our students to get involved with us in our research lab and as you uh, already uh, our we have uh, grants from dbt icmr and uh, obviously we hope to get more shortly our labs are well equipped with avant grade um, equipments and computational facilities and we are the proud processor of um, processor of illumina mysec uh, next generation sequencer it um, this illumina mysec gene sequencer offers dna sequencing rna sequencing and computational services as you can see here now the faculty this is our faculty profiles please consult our website for more information come to the course we offered we have two ms two year msc in medical biology and bioinformatics two year mtech in bioinformatics we have phd programs and we are actively looking for phd scholars we have both integrated and um, regular phd options in the related fields yes the admission is going on interested candidate can apply online for any admission related update please feel free to contact to call in this two numbers or you can drop us email at biosim at the rate jisiasr.org or please visit our website and facebook page for further update okay now it is time to talk science let's go back to my slide again my talk is carefully designed for the bsc and msc students uh there were money uh before you uh start i just uh, i forgot to mention one thing to the uh attendees today so if you have any questions uh keep on writing them uh in the chat section so once uh she finishes her presentation so she would be Uh, uh more than willing to uh answer uh your questions 
Okay, that's all. Sorry for the interruption, though, Bunny. I okay. can okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Bye. I can continue. So as I uh, was talking about, uh, my talk is carefully designed for BSc and master students. Also for anyone in the participant who is willing to get an overview and uh, may use this technique in future. So uh, seniors, please excuse me because this is a very basic uh, preliminary uh, talk. So my plan is um, something like that. Uh, I will give you an overview of molecular modeling with a uh, brief hands-on after I finish the basic things. You will need your computer or smartphone with internet connection to repeat after me. Okay, the title says Newton Law to Drug Design, an overview of molecular modeling. So why I'm dragging Sir Isaac Newton here? Okay, it will be revealed soon, please wait. Uh, let's see um, who got the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2013. In 2013, Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to three eminent scientists, Martin Kerplus, Michael Levitt, Eric Warshall, for the development of, the, of multi scale models for complex chemical systems. This was the recognition for their decades long hard work in development and application of molecular modeling. So let's see what they did. The medicine or drugs we take actually to stop any specific reaction, okay, not the chemical reaction, but any specific reaction, unwellness or problem our body is feeling and that we want to get rid of. A big group of scientists are working on this aspect. I mean, involved in uh, preparing drugs, vaccines, etc. You know, we are also waiting for the COVID-19 vaccine, right? Another group of scientists are involved in the research related to the chemical reactions, which requires bond breaking and bond making. We don't know, we do not know how to dig deep so that we have every information about chemical reaction, but we can use to make a computer model on what's uh, going on and uh, predict what happens in experiment that we cannot understand from experimental lab. The simplest model are based on Newton's law of motion. Now you know why I'm dragging uh, Sir Isaac Newton here. We call uh, this kind of models uh, based on chemical mechanics, uh, sorry, classical mechanics. Here molecules are treated as simple spheres moving up in collisions. More efficient model, uh, but the more of efficient models are those when we consider wave-like property of a particle. That means now I'm dragging Schrodinger here. So these kind of models are called the quantum mechanical model. Now each set of models ruled by either classical mechanics or quantum mechanics has its pros and cons. Classical models are faster for a computer to run, but unable to deal a uh, chemical reaction when bond breaking and making involved. On the other hand, quantum models are covering um, bond breaking and making aspects, but take forever to run a not so big molecule. Then which model is to consider? Our three Nobel Prize winner professors proposed a hybrid model. This model treats most of the molecule as classical, but treat piece of the molecule involving chemical reaction as quantum. Excellent, isn't it? So the take home message is, when you need to study a chemical reaction or a model with electron transfer, stick to the quantum model. And when you need all, con all information related to the conformational change, ligand binding, uh, molecular mobility, etc. stick to the classical mechanics. When you, need, when you need both, just look for a hybrid one. In our case today, we will stick to the classical model, which is based on Newton equation of motion. Now it's time to recap the second law, which is the force 
is equal to mass into acceleration. More mass, you need higher force. Before we discuss how and where we apply the second law, let's uh, dig deep to build a model of simple molecule, say water. We need two hydrogens and one oxygen for our water molecule. Computer actually does not identify apple to orange or hydrogen to oxygen. So what we need, we need to provide identifying parameter. Thus comes to force field. In chemistry and molecular modeling, force field estimates the forces between atoms within a molecule or sometimes between molecules. Force field refers to the functional form and parameter sets to calculate the potential energy of a molecule for simulation. The parameters are derived from experiments in physics or chemistry, mostly the spectroscopic experiments, or can be calculated quantum mechanically, or sometimes both. Here the atoms are considered as balls. So this is a, a schematic, uh, this is a model for a water molecule. This is oxygen connected to two hydrogen atoms. So uh, as I said, atoms are considered as balls connected by springs. So these, two, these are two atoms connected by a spring. So that we can identify these things as a molecule. Mass of the atoms should be provided as parameters. So bonds can be stretched. So this is a bond extension or can be compressed due to elasticity of the spring. This is the equilibrium or the real bond length. We call is R0. And we, uh, um, we often find the bond length R0 in our textbook. This can be calculated from quantum mechanics or derived from some experiments. Some experiments means the spectroscopic experiments. R is the bond length when it deviates from the real or I'm sorry not the reference or the equilibrium value. Energy penalties are associated with the deviation of bonds away from their reference point or equilibrium point reference values or equilibrium values. So it can be calculated the energy penalties can be cal calculated using this equation. So I think you can remember this equation is nothing but the Hooke's law. Similarly, for angle, energy penalty are also add up if deviation from equilibrium or this is the uh, equilibrium position, say, and it deviates. So deviation from equilibrium or reference for uh, angle value observed. This is the equation for angle penalties. No, sorry. This is the equation for the energy pen penalties calculated due to deviation of angle. The third contribution of the force field is from the dihedral angle. This is the angle between two planes. This is one plane, this is another plane. I drew these two planes, A, B, C and B, C, D. These are two planes. Phi is the angle between these two planes. Energy penalty, follow the equation here and the plot of energy with the angle is like this. So this is the energy and this is the change of dihedral angle between these two planes. Students from chemistry, you may remember the plot of energy versus angle for butane in uh, the stereochemistry chapters. Okay, so the next contribution is improper angle. Um, so improper angle, what is that? It is the angle due to out of plane arrangement of one atom among the four. So what we need, we need four atoms. Among these four atoms, one should be out of plane. What I uh, drew here, B, C and D are in plane. B, C and D are in plane and A is out of the plane. The equation is also like the Hooke's law and this is how it deviates from the reference or the equilibrium value. 
So all the energy terms, that means uh, uh, for bond, for angle, for uh, um, dihedral angle, for improper angles, all the energy terms are calculated together and uh, sum up together. And these are together called bonded potential. This is the bonded potential contribution of the force field. Okay, remaining contribution of the force field is non-bonded potential. So interaction of non-bonded atoms can be divided into two categories. One is called the Van der Waals interaction. Another is the electrostatic interactions. Van der Waals, what is the Van der Waals interaction? When two groups or atoms interact like this, say this is a group, this is another group of molecule or I mean the same molecule, um, two different non, um, uh, non-bonded uh, atoms are here say. So uh, what happened, say for example, methyl group, this is another methyl group. So methyl group, methyl group interactions. So these, these um, interactions are called the Van der Waals interaction. Whereas when we have two charged groups, two charged atoms, the interaction is, the call, um, is guided by the Coulombic law, Eij is equal to Qi, Qj by Rij. So this is the Coulombic, Coulombic interactions. Okay, so uh, if you look at this plot, this is the, here is energy, this is the separation distance. When two atoms are too close, this is repulsive. This repulsive interactions gradually converted to the um, attractive interactions when the molecules are distance apart. This is the equilibrium or the reference distance. And here the molecules becomes more stable or, or the interactions becomes more stable. And uh, after you apart atoms more and more, again, energy approaches to the zero when they do not see or feel each other. So out of sight, out of mind, right? So in the upper part, okay, equation van der, in the Van der Waals equation, this part is for the repulsive and this part is for the attractive, attractive in, uh, interaction, sorry. So um, this part is guided by the Coulombic law or this expression and this part is called the repulsive and this is the Leonard Jones plot. This non-bonded interaction are the most time consuming part while calculating energy of a molecule because one need to calculate or at least check possibilities between each pair of atoms. Bigger the molecule, larger the number of pairs which takes um, more time to check and calculate. Cutoff is the concept which restricts the checking as well as energy calculation after certain distance. So, so that beyond the fixed cutoff distance, no non-bonded interaction calculations occur. As per the definition of force field, it is a potential energy function. The energy is calculated from the contribution of all bonded term plus or non-bonded term. So to remind again all constants, so in the previous slides, you will see all the constants here, k, omega, k, theta, k, r, or uh, the constants in the um, here. So everything uh, are calculated along with the equilibrium bond length angle, dihedral improper angles are calculated from quantum mechanics or estimated from spectroscopic experiments. So the force field is empirical. Force field is used to calculate energy of a molecule for every instance. We use this energy calculation to find the minimum energy conformation, which is the most stable one. So, I'm sorry, uh, there are two types of molecules. Let's discuss um, something about the proteins. So if we consider molecule as a protein, 
there are two types of protein some of the protein we have crystal structure or enema structure which can be deposited which are uh, deposited in the protein data bank with a specific pdb code pdb code means it's identifier in unique pdb code some of them however do not have any uh, um, deposited structure but we know the sequence in this case we use homology modeling where we look for other sequence alike proteins with known structures means there should be other protein with known structures with similarish sequence at least partly if not fully homology modeling align all sequences and from the known templates of the structures homology modeling assigns the unknown protein a structure for both of these two cases what we do we solvent the protein into a water box similar to when you dissolve a pinch of salt in a glass of water we add ions to control ph sorry i missed the positive and negative sign there should be positive and negative signs so we add ions to control ph ionic strength whatever you do in your experimental lab okay let uh see a movie it's a movie time mm. so when i dissolve my protein along with the ions to maintain either ionic strength or the ph or the uh, if i want to neutralize our system so it should look like this let's see okay so next what we do we energy minimize the whole box that i showed this if i uh, represent this box so we energy minimize this box to remove any uh, structural conflicts or any artifacts here x axis is the energy that is the change of energy and uh, my mistake sorry x axis is the conformational parameter and y axis is the energy so conformational parameter means i can use anything that means angle uh, dihedral angle or anything that available or any structural properties so here yellow ball is our protein in water box so this one in water box is here so this is my starting structure what i'm going to do i'm going to minimize the energy of the system how the energy calculated have to solve that equation that i just showed you where we have bonded and non bonded contribution to get that potential energy function that means force field where all the equilibrium bond distance bond angle um, equilibrium bond distance angle between two planes angle improper angle everything has be calculated from um, quantum mechanics or can be uh, derived from spectroscopic experiments so now what we have this is my starting structure i am energy minimizing it so the ball is rolling in this direction in this direction from higher energy to the lower energy it can stop at this local minima or can cross this energy barrier if it can and reach to the global minimum this is then our desired me desired minimum energy conformation we can uh, desired minimum energy conformation can be reached to calculate energy at every instances again the computer solves the potential energy function we just discussed so again this is the global minima this is a local minima here molecule can be trapped but if it has enough energy it can cross the barrier and can reach its native conformation or the minimum energy conformation here we consider this is the most stable molecule how it gets that minimum energy it can relax it can change its um, sorry it can take care of steric interactions or the other um, art, uh, artifact of model building sometime the force field has to be relaxed and so a lot of things uh, are here taking place so 
finally we get the minimum energy confirmation now we need to select working temperature and simulate the system to relax um, at this temperature and the other parameters we are applying followed by a long production run after that we get huge data we can analyze the data whatever we want whatever property we are looking for we can just analyze using this simulation data okay uh, before going to the simulation detail uh, as you uh, could not find uh, let me introduce the other thing that is called the periodic boundary condition uh, as you could not find a single salt molecule to dissolve in your glass of water we also do not simulate a single molecule in a water box but computationally it is impossible to simulate avogadro number of molecules because this is highly time consuming so to be statistically significant we use periodic boundary condition what is this here look at this center uh, central cell this is a unit cell which we just saw in our previous slide so this one images of this cell is considered to place in all direction of this one and calculate their combined effect in this way uh, the molecule of the actual cell can see its image but we can't but what we can feel we can feel the contribution not the feel we can calculate the contribution of their presence the other cells presence seeing means it's affected incorporated in the calculation to know further detail please consult the articles and books i i will refer at the end okay so newton again so where is newton's law okay let's see after energy minimized what we did i told you it to system need to relax at the desired temperature or the other parameters say pressure volume etc so after minimum after energy minimized we have the stable structure minimum energy structure or the uh, stable structure means we have a x y z coordinates we call it starting coordinates so why starting coordinates because we will uh, we will uh, going to start from these coordinate what to start to start simulation before simulation so we also need assign velocities because molecules should move so we should assign velocities to each of the atoms then algorithm calculate total forces on each atom so atom 1 atom 2 atom 3 they calculate the force on each atoms and then add it up okay then algorithm calculates the total sorry for this messing up of this uh, equation but okay let me uh, tell you what i wrote here then the algorithm calculates total um, uh, acceleration or the total um, the, um, the total force on each atoms then the atoms uh, the algorithm just solves the newton's law so newton's law of motion that means d2 r dt square which is is equal to f by m again let us consider atom number i i th atom so how do we write d2 r i by by dt2 that means second derivative of the position with respect to time t here small t here is time is equal to fi that means force on that specific atoms divided by mass of that specific atom uh, if you remember at the very beginning i told you so uh, computer does not understand apple to orange or hydrogen to oxygen so what you need you need to provide mass of hydrogen mass of oxygen or mass of everything that 
uh, molecule contains okay every elements again i am repeating it so in this step an integration takes place after calculating force we comes to here here we solve newton equation of motion for each atom the equation should be d2 r i by d t2 is equal to f i by by m i the previous equation you remember force is equal to mass into acceleration so this is mass this is force and this is our acceleration r is the position the change of position t is the time okay so newton is happy now next step is to assign new coordinates and new velocities to each atoms means movement so new velocities new coordinates means atom is now moving please ignore this uh, down arrow so i changed my computer so i just missed to check if there is any arrows this my mistake so it should be r i at t that means the new um, the previous time time t now change to the r i t plus d t that means now i am changing from t to t plus d t okay or say t 0 to t 1 similarly this was the previous velocity at time t now it changes to the next velocity which is at time t plus dt okay so after that the algorithm calculates system properties meaning temperature pressure energy stress etc and then save the coordinates and the velocities in a file called trajectory file then back to the force cal calculation again so this is in a loop until you reach the desired step so this is all about the simulation now simulation is computationally intensive larger the molecule more the cpu time say if you look at this for a desktop computer it will be a, it it will be ridiculously time consuming but not to worry this is how we speed it up we can use cut off or we can freeze the uh bonds that are not directly affecting our studies or investigation or even we can reduce the um, step size so integration step size i do not need to integrate the whole system at every instances we can jump few steps we need efficient scripting if you uh, write the script smartly then you can get faster result okay we can use coarse grain mb simulation that means previously i told all atom mb simulation where we consider all atoms but now we can uh, compromise our resolution we can opt for a low resolution model which is called the coarse grain mb simulation okay or uh, for some purpose we can use hybrid model of all atom and coarse grain we can use faster mb simulation algorithm we can use advanced sampling sampling techniques for example replica exchange molecular dynamic simulation which is very efficient we can also opt for parallel computing high performance computing cluster gpu acceleration is another important part to speed it up again we can redesign computer chips so that we can use the computer chips to get faster simulation but molecular dynamic simulation is very complex it again complex due to the different types of uh, uh, system that we are getting interested so for a more complex system it needs higher time and so we need to 
change our uh, techniques. So this is, these are can be done with quantum mechanical simulation. But for these things, quantum mechanical simulation is very slow. So we need to opt for all atom molecular dynamic simulation. If you ask me to work with a virus capsidus, this kind of organelles or say coronavirus. So I cannot use all atom with simulation because it will take forever. So I have to uh, compromise the, um, to the um, to some extent, so I should opt for four strand molecular dynamic simulation, which is low resolution, but it can serve my purpose. And for bacterium, yes, I don't know. So depending upon the needs or the system complexity, we should change the techniques of simulation. So molecular dynamic simulation can be different types. So uh, different um, advancement is still going on. So again, I'm repeating with that complexity, we should opt for different simulation. This is a very good article just came out. So you can consult this to know more from uh, on this part. Okay. So let's see few applications of simulation. The first is the docking the drug designing drug designing is now it is is very important aspect so how do you use a molecular dynamic simulation to design a drug first step is to find a target protein so you need to find the disease that you want to cure and uh, then you should find the proteins that are involved in the disease and then you need to um, find the specific target protein you want to work with. Next, we choose prospective drugs molecules from the library or from the literature or from uh, some previous experimental studies. Uh, then you have protein and you have drugs. Then what to do? You have to draw and then model drug molecules using available tools. Why I'm talking about drawing? Because the viewer tools uh, not the viewer, my mistake, the tools that model the drug, first you need to draw that structure there. So, but not by pen and pencil, but with the computer technique. So you need to draw and then model drug molecules using the available tools, for example, Pymol, Kembal 3D, etc. Kembal 3D is very efficient, Pymol as well is a very, very good one. Then optimize to find minimum energy conformation of the drug molecules. So you can use any optimizing technique to find the minimum energy conformation because before you, you just drew it. And now you need to create a 3D structure to uh, work with and so that you, need, you should remove all the artifacts. Now you can use any docking server. You can use any docking server. I will talk about the docking server later. So uh, to dock, say uh, this is my uh, wonderful drawing. I'm sorry for that. This is my protein. I try to draw a protein and this is the, the drug. Okay, please bear with me. So um, just think this drug is docked here. And I say, uh, let's consider, I use uh, some uh, docking software to find this molecule, the complex molecule. Now what you need to do, you have a docked complex. So what you do, or actually you don't, the docking server, what it does, it, uh, you need, um, it needs extensive simulation to get a well-converged ensemble. Then we cluster the ensemble based on like properties. For example, some structural properties, for example, root mean square deviation of C alpha or root mean square deviation of backbones. Okay, then we calculate this root mean square deviation or, or in short, we call it RMSD or other structural features over the entire time scale. That means the time we simulated. First we simulate, then we cluster it, then we calculate the structural property over the time. Next step is virtual screening. 
which helps us to rank the best fit dog structures. Uh, there are few criteria to find these things. One of the important criteria is the free energy of the binding. Now we are ready for the next step to uh, next step of rigorous structural and functional analysis for the protein and drug. And here, what you usually do, you, you rank the, pro, the uh, conformation, or that means uh, protein ligand conformation, drug protein con conformation, and based on some scores, so can be calculated from various factor. One of the most important is free energy of binding, change of free energy of binding. So um, the more negative is the better and goes to rank one. And this is how the drug designing take place. Next, another case study, we use simulation for building lipid bilayer. So these blue things are lipids, this is bilayer. How do you understand bilayer? This is the water molecules. Here you have the head groups of proteins somewhere hiding and these um, uh, tiny um, strands are the tail long hydrophobic tails of lipids. This is also the same thing. These are the water and there are head groups and these hydrophobic tails are the lipid, um, are from the lipids. And this is the bilayer. So this is one layer and this is another layer. It can be simulate, you can have idea this is a huge system, but we can simulate this using um, techniques of molecular dynamics simulation. We and then what um, authors did, they um, insert these uh, channel made up of helices through uh, this bilayer. And then, um, you know, those uh, channels can transfer lots of things, water molecules, sugars, uh, ions. So all those things can be done with the uh, simulation. The next example is P27, uh, electrostatic binding of P27 on the CDK2 and cyclin A surface. This P27 is a cell cycle regulator. This is a trimer of, this is a trimer of CDK2, cyclin A and P27. Have a closer look. There is a strong electrostatic complementarity at the P27 interface. Red means negatively charged surface. Blue is positively charged surface. R, R, K, R, R and K are positively charged amino acids. R is arginine, K is lysine. So positively charged amino acids are stick on the negatively charged surface of the, uh, these two uh, proteins. Again, D is aspartic acid and E is glutamic acid. So these two are the negatively charged amino acids which are connected, to, which are uh, here uh, interacted with the positively charged surface. We find actually this charge arrangement is sole guide of ligand binding on the protein surface of this specific example. Here, the x-axis is um, x-axis is the intermolecular interactions, intermolecular contacts, which define binding. That means more contacts means uh, better binding, and binding means lower the free energy change. So here, the free energy barrier is huge. W stroke O means without charge. W stroke charge is with charge. When we have charged um, amino acid present, the free energy barrier is much lower compared to when we have amino acids replaced by neutral um, amino acids. Okay. Um, so here, actually what I did, I have muted the charged amino acid by neutral amino acids to check the role of charges. See, uh, it reduces free energy bar barrier and it samples a uh, lot of randomly oriented conformation. What is this? This is the P27 orientation on the dimer surface. Dimer means CDK2 and cyclin A. 
and this is the center of mass separation of these two things that means center of mass of p27 and center of mass of cdk2 and cyclin complex so more separation means no binding these are too far away from each other less separation that means they bounds to each other so you can see when it has it uh, in absence of charge amino acids the the color range is high energy is really high so it has the random orientation but when we have the charged molecule charged amino acid in the p27 the energy range is quite low so is more native like orientation of an encounter encounter means when p27 um, contact the cyclin cdk2 surface okay so the next story is uh, is a little different so here what we have we have um, there are two proteins one is phosphorylated kit we call p kit and its binding partner kicks both are uh, required to take care of some complex cellular household uh, but picket in, in is intrinsically disordered means picket do not fold without kicks it can fold before bind so this is unfold this look at this schematic unfolded to folded and here unbound to bound so sometime it folds first and then bound sometime it binds first and then fold please ignore this image so our simulation finds picket binds first then folds this is uh, the time axis i am showing 45 nanosecond uh, simulation x axis is representing binding contacts or i may say distance between the uh, intermolecular atoms no contacts means no binding no contacts means no binding here the kicks molecule and this is the peak hit. So no contacts means no binding. Fewer contacts, say fewer contacts means fewer, uh, fewer contacts means just binding. Okay, and full contacts, so these are the full contacts means complete binding and folding. This cannot be fully traced by experiments alone. Both simulation and experiment complement each other to achieve this goal. So, another case study is the aggregation. This is a collaborative work with Dr. Jointananda from IIST Shipu. Two of my students, Anamika and Rituparna, actually this, did this simulation. We simulate 200 such molecules to get our aggregated spheres. And uh, that uh, we need around 100 nanosecond. We use Chromax. Uh, do you want to see the movie? Let's see the movie. Say, oh, sorry. So this, okay, this is somewhere in the starting complex. So after that, so after some time, we got, uh, say this is uh, around um, 80 to 90 nanoseconds, we can have this kind of aggregation. So simulation can work very well in this aggregation step. So my, this one is all atom simulation. Um, if we opt for low resolution model, we can have a better ping. Isn't it amazing? We will submit this manuscript by end of this month. Okay, uh, now these are some useful resources for beginners. Some common simulation tools are Charm, Gromax, NMD, Amber, Discovery Studio, Desmond, Tinker, etc. cetera. Uh, free of cost, open access. You need any of these molecular viewer to install on your computer. For proteins of unknown structure, we use homology modeling um, to get our predicted starting structure. So, uh, sorry, where is my homology modeling? Yeah, 
Swiss model, Discovery Studio, etc. etc. Autodoc, ZDoc, Hadoc, these are uh, Gramex, these are few docking softwares. These things are two um, very, very helpful tools. So uh, Charm GUI and MMTSP tool set, without this, the life is so difficult for a person who uh, regularly use simulation, molecular RNA simulation. Okay, these are very excellent server, but also you need to read uh, the concept and assimilate between the line philosophy of molecular modeling. You may start with uh, these articles of Carplus and Mackerman. I have already introduced, uh, I have al already mentioned the name of Nobel Prize winner Martin Carplus, but Professor Mackerman is also a big shot in computational biophysics. He actually parameterized the force fields for CHARM. CHARM is a simulation software. Uh, this is one of the very popular textbook in this field by uh, Andrew Leach. Uh, manuals are also very important because a textbook doesn't give you all uh, the important information about uh, regarding the parameters. So uh, these two are also must read. Okay, so let let me uh, show you um, how I prepare a protein for simulation um, following every steps I just mentioned. You can repeat these uh, with me if you can wish. As I said before, you only need your computer with internet connection. Those who are uh, joining with um, your uh, phone, I'm not very sure if you can work uh, with your uh, smartphone, but uh, you can have a look uh, later. You can uh, definitely uh, do the thing. So uh, let me um, let me change this uh, screen. Okay, how do I? Uh, So let's start together. Go to your browser. Here I'm using Firefox, Google Charm GUI. So Charm GUI, C-H-A-R-M-M, -M. okay, Charm with double M. The full form is chemistry at Harvard macromolecular mechanics. Click on that first entry and um, you, you can have this page. On your left, look for input generation. Click on PDB reader. Scroll down. So uh, here you can find the field download PDB file. Write 3GB1. So it can, um, you can uh, just write the PDB ID if you already know. If you do not, then you have to go to the rcsb.org, that means PDB data bank, and look for the unique PDB code. Or if you do not uh, have the, this PDB ready, if you want to upload the PDB from your computer, you can also browse from here, but you have to click on, is this the RCSB format or the charm format? Okay, then, uh, okay, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention that 3GB is uh, the structure of B1 domain of streptococcal protein G. Okay, now I'm clicking the next step. It is now telling us total number of amino acid, which is 56 here. And uh, you can see select model one, there are 32 models. So 3GB1 actually NMR structure. So it has multiple model deposited. You may select any specific model if you wish, or you can uh, read all model. If you click on this, uh, then it 
it, it will read all model and get an average. I'm leaving this blank and I'm selecting the first one. In this page, few things to notice carefully. So this is what is the title, protein ID, type, and experimental method, NMR. Terminal group patching, I uh, should check this terminal group patching. Mm, during simulation, uh, do not leave terminal groups open. I mean with positive and negative charges on. This is, very, uh, this is actually unrealistic. Most of the mm, cases, PDBs do not have hydrogen coordinates, hydrogen atoms. So you need to generate that hydrogen coordinates. Keep this field checked. Okay, if you want, you can mute it. If you need to control the pH, you can add a protonation step. Uh, disulfide bond phosphorylation is very important. Those who are interested in post translational modification, GPI anchor, glyco, uh, glycosylation, glycan uh, ligands, adding lipid gel or peptide stapling is also very important things nowadays. So um, whatever you need, you can just check these boxes and you will have it. Okay. So uh, the only, uh, the bad thing is uh, here, they do not have acetylation patch. Once I spent good few hours to write acetylation patch by myself. Okay, mm, click on next step. Now we can view our structure, which should be ready, sh I think shortly. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Okay, so, Let's see. Now we can view our structure, which is ready for further steps, means energy more optimization, solvation, simulation, etc. So this is the structure of 3GB1. It has beta strands and one helix. But uh, what if we have everything done uh, by uh, charm tool? It would be wonderful, right? So let's see if we can do. Click on the solution builder. Scroll down. Write 3GB1 again. Next step. Here you have all the information related to the protein again. Next step, I'm using terminal group patching. There are different types of uh, patching, but just stick on the first and last as CETA, enter and CETA. Okay, that means N terminal and C terminal. So, next step. Okay. So I'm not looking at the structure right now because it would give it is the same thing that we are looking for. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, the same one, right? So uh, here you can. Sp okay, these are the energies. Those all the energies we uh, already talked about. All the energies and more also. So this is not minimized enough but uh, the computer will do the thing shortly. So um, you can specify water box size or you can ask the server to fit the water box size to protein size. You can choose anything rectangular or octa octahedral, but uh, these age distance is also important. Here we keep it 10 angstrom, that means in this rectangle, rectangular, we have protein in the middle and uh, the distance from the protein to each, each edge is 10 angstrom so that protein can relax whatever it prefers. So he, these ions are also important. Using these include ion, you can maintain the ionic strength you want to. So if you prefer 0.15 molar KCl, then 
click on this, it will calculate the number of ions required for you. Here, 19 positive ions and 15 negative ions will be generated. But if you do not want the ionic strength to add, just you, you can use add neutralizing ions. It automatically gives you four positive ions required to neutralize your system. Or if you do not want, just uncheck this box. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, if I click on this add neutralization ion, what happened? And again, on placing method, I usually keep Monte Carlo here, or you can also use distance if you do not working with uh, lipid. Okay, go to next step. It will take a while to finish. Uh, because we will get a solvated protein at the end of this step. But uh, remember, this is uh, still a unit cell. Uh, I mean, the single protein molecules in a water box. So what we need, we need a periodic boundary condition. To remind you what why you need periodic boundary condition because when you have any solute and a solvent you never pick one molecule from your solute and dissolve it in a test tube what you need you need a number of molecules in in your test tube to be dissolved so that we need periodic boundary condition here to create multiple image to mimic a true, uh, true solution. Okay, let's check. Um, first check the solvated protein. Nice. These are the ions. You remember at the very beginning, I showed you a water uh, molecule, a water box, their ions are there and the molecule is there, the protein molecule. So it's completely solvated. It's a nice rectangular box with one, two, three, four ions. Remember, to uh, neutralize, you need only four ions. So I only have four ions. Okay. So let's check the PBC. There are some parameters. You can explain, go and look uh, at the textbook, leach or the manuals online uh, for detail of these parameters. Um, or we may explain this part um, some other day. So next, I'm clicking on the next for the PPC. Let's wait for the PPC. So here all the energy terms are calculated. You can see now this is the energy. So you can see the energy is negative. You know, more negative is the better. Okay. I can show you the whole thing. This is the temperature. Okay. So uh, let's as I said, uh, there is PVC incorporated, but you can only see the unit cell. There are images in every direction, but we cannot see the images. But only the contribution of images are incorporated here during the calculation. Okay, now uh, if you opt for charm, you can you, you, you do not need to do anything because charm GUI is based on charm simulation software. But you can change the force field if you wish. You can use um, this input file. Okay, the purpose is to create the input file and also the structures and everything so that you have everything done before that you require to start a simulation. So if you uh, prefer to use Nandi, if you prefer to use Gromax, OpenMM or Desmond, LAMPS, anything, 
you can just click and it will give you that respective uh, scripts as well but i use charm in this case so i am not clicking on anything nvt ensembles or npt ensembles you can have anything that you prefer the system will first equilibrate remember my that slide where i have equilibration and then production run and this is for the production run here you can select the temperature you can select any temperature that you prefer for your system this is the final step it will give me the final equilibration and production script at this point what you need you need your linux machine so you need a linux computer so uh, to run the charm and anything okay okay so uh, say that um, 3gb1 i submitted that run and now i have the result how it should look like uh, give me a second to share that with you okay so this is that molecule you identify this is a different representation so this purple one the helix part and the yellow strands are beta strands see this is the starting part now um what happened it's completely unfolded right so i have 1000 friends so it's completely unfolded again it unfolded again it gets folded so it will unfold and fold unfold and fold it's unfolded 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 still it is unfolded folded unfolded and again folded unfolded completely so let's see the movie I tagged um, N and C terminal so that we'll have an idea what is going on in what what part. So uh, have a careful look. Can you tell me which part fold, folds first, helical for, for helix or the beta strands? Helix first. Okay, so one thing I want to tell that uh, this simulation is a coarse grain simulation. So if you use coarse grain simulation, then you can have uh, you can run long simulation. Or if this simulation is all atom simulation, you need to increase the temperature to get this unfolded and folded things. Or you need to use replica exchange molecular dynamic simulation. Some other time I may want to talk about this uh, replica exchange simulation or uh, high temperature unfolding. Okay, so come back to my slide. So where I was. So uh, what I uh, the website that I have used www.charmm charm with double m hyphen g u i dot o r g mmtsb toolset is another very useful tool toolset. You can use that 
tool set also to prepare your system for simulation. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh my mistake, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Some future hands-on plans. There are a um, few interesting topic. Sometime in future, our uh, department um, may arrange some workshop session or online hands-on session for this fields of structural biology, docking using freely available web servers, homology modeling, mem membrane building, mechanical unfolding of the protein. Do visit our website and Facebook page for an update. Tomorrow, we have uh, the second webinar on these four day series. Uh, Dr. Kamak Shishurekha will speak on bacterial signaling and infectious disease. This should be a very interesting talk. Please do not miss. The day after tomorrow, Dr. Rachana Banerjee will talk on human microbiome and its influence on health and diseases. Please do not forget to attend. And the last day, our HOD, Professor Shuja Chattopadhar, will speak on microbial evolution, infectious diseases, and computational genomics. It is on August 6th at 3 p.m. So there are so many persons in my life to whom I am grateful for this presentation. All my mentors, from masters to PhD to postdocs, my seniors, my colleagues and friends, who has suggested uh, the title by one of my friends actually suggested the title of this talk. Thank you very much to him. My wonderful students, my departmental HOD and other colleagues here in GIS ISL, my collaborators and obviously DBT. Too many to list without mentioning any names. I sincerely convey my regards and thanks to everyone. And dear participant, thank you very much for your patience. Now I'm ready to answer your questions, if you have any. Thank you so much, uh, Devobani. Uh, just a quick thing before you close uh, this sharing screen, uh, can you uh, go to the last few, yeah. So there is uh, a, a typo, I, be, I believe it's uh, uh -oh. something that I sent to you and it's totally my mistake. Uh, um, tomorrow is August 5, it's fine, but if you go to the next one, Oh, oh my mistake, this, this should be August 6th. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, this, I, is, this I is something I, 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 I sent to you. So it's mm -hmm. not your fault. It's totally my fault. Uh, I, uh, yeah. So I did a mistake here. It should be August 6th. And the next one would be on Friday. That is. Uh, Why don't I correct it now? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'm sorry. I should look at it. Yeah. So you have always, uh, um, I mean, um, you, you, I believe you have enjoyed uh, this uh, wonderful presentation by Dr. Ganguly. And uh, definitely, uh, please uh, join us in the upcoming webinars. And uh, there are quite a few questions. Uh, so first, uh, let me go to one anonymous attendee. Uh, the question is, can this molecular dynamic simulation be done computationally by some modeling software alone? Uh, actually, human intervention is always required. Uh, you can use any modeling software to do that, but I do not think there is any um, affordable um, software where you can run a 100 nanosecond or 200 nanosecond simulation. So for, uh, I think one nanosecond or two nanosecond is the maximum they usually allow. But uh, yeah, you need your own computer either or you need to uh, attach to any supercomputer uh, lab where uh, you can pay and uh, uh, they allow the space, the storage space is very important for us and the computer facility. Uh, 
but uh, any modeling software yes it you can use any modeling software but for the computer or the um, to run the system you need either your own or some cloud computing facilities cloud storage facilities or any cluster that you have in some lab or somewhere and the next question uh, by devaruti bag uh, she's asking why would helix fold first uh, this charm ui for example okay devaruti thank you for your question so that i need to sit with you and need to show you the contacts maps and the things uh, here it is uh, easy for those contacts to meet first okay so for these uh, specific example you can uh, have the idea the helix folds first but if i show you some different example you can have the idea no uh, it is not the some other part folds first but here why helix folds first uh, because uh, those contacts you remember uh, those contacts are easily to build because this is just 141414 contacts yeah mm, uh, uh, after you form that part completely then other contacts other portions are uh, coming closure so that that hydrogen bond of the beta strands uh, now are uh, ready to uh, form okay uh, the next question is from anubhav dash uh, thank you for your insightful overview ma'am i would like to ask if i am using homology modeling or de novo modeling and want to assess the models what parameter should i consider to rank the models q mean score or ramachandran plots uh, actually for the homology modeling if you are using swiss model q mean score is uh, the uh, factor the parameter to assess ramachandran plot i do not think you can use uh, for assessing the model okay cumin is also the tertiary uh, contact score uh, for the rama um, but for swiss model homology modeling cumin score is the factor and uh, next question is from dr indrani sharkar of uh, narula institute of technology which force field is suitable for protein and which one for dna simulation uh indranidhi um charm 36 is very good one for protein and as well as dna simulation actually the uh, problem is for charm 36 uh it favors helix a little bit but if you opt for opls that means from from amber that favors uh uh what it called a beta sheet so there are always some pros and cons but charm 36 mm i always opt for that and uh first one the charm 36 mm you can use it in gromax in namd and after that uh, the good one is opls a and uh, another one from one anonymous attendee ma'am do these molecular docking of drugs uh, always are these molecular docking of drugs uh, always successful for identifying potential drugs for a particular disease uh, not always this is all uh, this is already a prediction right so uh, the prediction means always there is a chance to fail but it can give you a idea so that experiments can Uh, you can uh, perform the exp ex experiments okay so it uh, otherwise you have to check every possibilities so uh, this is very very expensive to uh, check every possibilities uh, so docking actually um, helps you to narrow down okay not it is it is not like that it's always successful okay i uh, don't see any uh, today's presentation related questions here uh, yeah 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 uh, new one just has come up we used um, 
NCBI to download databases during graduation. Please suggest more such websites. Ah, uh, this is not from my expertise. I think um, Shujo, the Dr. Shujo Chotopadha uh, can. Uh, uh, actually, I, I can yeah. no, I can add something uh, yes. if you allow me. Yeah, yeah, please, uh, Shujo. Yeah, hmm. yeah. So it, it depends on what kind of database you're looking for, actually. So uh, it could be um, if you are looking for just. Uh, nucleotide sequences, protein sequences, uh, genome sequences, uh, uh, all these things, structures of protein sequences, then NCBA is, I believe, the biggest umbrella under which you have different separate uh, database servers which you can access to. And, uh, but, I mean, if you are looking for, uh, say, antibiotic resistance genes, um, or some uh, pathogenicity islands or something for some organisms, or maybe um, um, Leobani also, you can suggest something that, I mean, there, there could be different other kinds of uh, databases. So there are different groups. If you, for example, there is one journal, Nucle Nucleic Acids Research Journal, uh, this journal has got a database issue uh, every year. So it comes up with a list of database uh, articles. And there are many other uh, journals uh, that come up with different database articles. And these database articles is based on different area. Uh, and, and then, so totally, it would depend uh, on your area of interest, what kind of databases you would uh, like to get, what kind of information you'd like to get, and then you have to search. And definitely, if you just, uh, I mean, you just need to ask this to Professor Google, and, uh, <laughs> yes. and, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, you will get the answer, I believe. Uh, but uh, in any case, if you have some specific questions, I believe um, I have uh, got this question from Bilkis Rahman, uh, who also asked uh, a question in the chat section, do we get a feedback link? Thank you, ma'am. So I already answered to uh, her as well as to anyone uh, who were uh, attending this uh, presentation that you can always send your feedback uh, and also show your interest uh, if you want to get admission to any of our uh, courses, admissions are going on at biosimp at giasiasr.org. And um, the thing is, uh, if uh, Bilkis, you have any specific area of interest in your mind for which you want to have some kind of information, some kind of information on databases, you can always write to us. Uh, we would be happy to help. Yep, you. this is a mail ID again. Yeah. And the contact information. So not only for um, the admission, you can drop email if you want to want our help for your studies and research or anything. Yeah, definitely. So that's that's uh, one of the major visions I would like to mention here. Uh, it's not like uh, just another. Uh, commercial institute, uh, just uh, like uh, uh, any other private institutes. So we we have a motto of uh, uh, kind of uh, helping to the community in whichever way we can, based on our expertise, based on our domain knowledge. So if you have any kind of questions, um, you just feel free to shoot an email to us. Would be happy. I mean. As far as we know, we would uh, uh, like to help you in whichever way we can. And there is another question, I missed that one, from Shireen Naz. I want to know that there is, and uh, if there is any entrance exam taken by GISIS to get admission in MSc in Medical Biotechnology and Bioinformatics. Well, at this point, at this, this year, we can say that there is no such entrance exam, but there will be an interview, uh, kind of an in informal interaction with the faculty members where we judge you and you judge us. That's kind of uh, 
interactive session. And that is how we would uh, like to recommend you to the admission cell based on your performance uh, for, I mean, whether they're going to uh, send you a selection later or not. Uh, and there is a scope for uh, scholarships, uh, but it would depend on either of the two or both things. That is your uh, financial conditions. Uh, you have to give a proof of, your, of such a condition and or your merit. If you are extremely meritorious, yeah, we would definitely consider. But the way to get it, so you have to get uh, the admission with uh, just a admission fee and a refundable caution deposit. And then you have to apply to our director uh, stating your need for financial assistance and the reason and the evidence. Then definitely um, we will be happy to consider your request. So that is the way uh, to go. Let me see uh, if there are any other questions that we missed. Uh, no, there are many no. people are saying, yeah, okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, we thank you for attending this. Yeah, thank you very uh, much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, uh, we hope to see you uh, tomorrow again with uh, maybe many of your other friends who couldn't attend today's one. Uh, 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 just uh, tell them to attend the next ones if possible. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.